It was a normal day in my life. Uh, I was on my period. I just started feeling really, really bad. Just flu-like symptoms, just like starting to feel like nauseous and my head pounding and... I immediately stripped off everything, got in my bed, and that's the last thing that I remember. The police get there and it takes them like 30 minutes to get in my apartment. And they find me face down on my, my bedroom floor and I'm like literally 10 minutes from death. They rush me to St. John's. I had a heart attack, I had 107 fever. All my organs were failing. They just had no idea what was happening to me. They didn't get why this young 24-year-old girl in great shape is plummeting and there's no real reason for it. Once they found the tampon, they sent it to the lab and it came back as TSS-1, which is toxic shock syndrome. They put me in a coma. I woke up like, I think it was a week and a half later. I was 200 pounds. I couldn't talk because I had all the tubes. And my, I remember my mom being there and I was overhearing a conversation. It was literally like, I have a 24 year old girl here and she's gonna need a below the knee amputation on her right leg. I just remember laying there being like, is this a joke? Like. This is not real, like she's not talking about me, you know? Like I can't, my legs are my life, like there's no way. I had model parents my whole life, and so I grew up in the industry of everyone being beautiful. My mother was always perfect. She never left the house unless she was done up. I only saw beauty as one thing, and that was what I looked like. I judged people on what they looked like. I wanted to make sure you had a good job or a good car, or you dressed well. The thought of my legs being gone, no way, you know? Please, mom, like, don't let them take my leg, you know? Please don't, don't let that happen. It was so hard. You know, my mom kissing my leg, and you write, like, yes and no on your legs. Like, yes, this is the one that's going. And no, this is the one that we're keeping. And to see that visually on your leg. And then my mom kissing my leg and knowing that that's the last time. And just to be wheeled away and knowing that you're coming out a completely different person. And you can never get that back. Yeah. I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't want anyone to know where I was. I didn't want anyone to know what really happened. I just did not want to live. What the hell do I do from here? Am I ugly? Am I disgusting? Am I... I'm ashamed of who I am. I'm no longer beautiful. I'm no longer that, that hot supermodel-esque whatever you want to, you know. I'm not that girl anymore. What am I? Every single thing that I knew about myself was, was gone. At that time, I had got an email from a girl named Jennifer Rovero. She was the only thing that Basically, I felt safe talking to because we knew each other, but we weren't very close. She texted me or Facebooked me out of nowhere, and she had said, like, hey, I'm going to movies with my kids. Would love if you'd come. And I said, I'm in New York, actually, modeling right now. I can't. But really, I was in my bed just trying to learn how to walk again. Because I just was so ashamed and I was so scared of being rejected because I lived my whole life as this other person. Here I am, physically, something is gone and missing. I can't change, I can't, you know, buy something that's gonna make my leg grow back. As months go on, we fell in love over the phone, developed a relationship. I used her as my motivation. So that way, I could walk up to her front door and she could see me for me and not for what happened, not because I don't have a leg. I kept going into physical therapy, trying to learn how to walk. Because I was in a wheelchair for eight months, I didn't move around very much and I didn't, I wasn't active. It takes like 150% more energy for me to walk than a normal person. So like, it's jogging for me basically. I remember just knocked on her door and she opened the door and I walked in and I just said, I need to tell you something. And then I told her and I showed her my leg and she's like, I don't fucking care. It was so like, when Jen and I, my girlfriend, when we got together, you know, she was always trying to take pictures of me and I was just like, no, because I didn't see myself in that way. I didn't see the person that she saw. That person no longer existed to me. But she was so relentless and like continuously just like trying to show me myself, my new me, and the beauty that I still have and do have. 
once she captured me and that, that light and that essence and I saw how powerful I, I looked, I was like, wow. I saw myself in a whole different light. I eventually made the decision to amputate my second leg because the damage was just too severe. I think I'm more beautiful now than I've ever been inside and out. I was in Switzerland at the airport and there was a little boy and he was just staring at my legs. He literally kept looking at me, looking at his legs. And then he turned to his mom and he's like, Mommy, Mommy, can I have golden legs? <laughs> that to me is beautiful. It's not about this. It's not about what we look like. It's about your heart. It's about what you leave on this planet when you're not here anymore. That's what's important, and that's what this life is about. See the worth in yourself, and that you are beautiful, and the things that you may not like about yourself are probably the strongest attributes you have. If people just realize who they are in themselves and how beautiful their mind is, they'll be shocked. I'm Lauren Wasser. I am the girl with the golden legs. During this shift, my life changed forever. A woman stared at me from across the way. I thought she had a few screws loose, so I tried my best to ignore her very intense stares. She eventually makes her way over to me and asks me the most offensive question you can ask a person of color. 